It's been good to be in God's house this morning. Amen? Amen. What a wonderful worship service, song service. Give them all the praise and glory. So I'm just uh, blessed and, in, and encouraged. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you for, for uh, being here. Looking forward to preaching to you this, this morning. And uh, listen, we, we can leave now saying it was good to be in the house of the Lord. But don't you dare leave yet. You hang in there with me a few minutes a few minutes more, okay? This, this last Sunday of September, October's on us. Next Sunday morning, we'll receive communion together. And that's always just a wonderful, wonderful time. So uh, we'll receive communion next Sunday morning uh, at the close of the service. And it's open communion, open to all believers. So we, we want to welcome you to, to do that. Sandy, good to see you also. After three surgeries, you're back in worship with us. We're thankful. Amen. Good. Good. All right. Uh, I, I'm in a, a, a fall series on the end times, and uh, so far we've, we've preached uh, those messages there about, about the rapture, and uh, then after the rapture, we looked at the, uh, the, uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse and what's going to take place right after the rapture. We looked at before the rapture, the days of Noah. Uh, it was a pretty strong uh, uh, message uh, that, that Sunday morning, but before uh, the rapture, we looked at the battle of Armageddon, and uh, this morning I, I want to talk about the hope of heaven, and uh, the hope, uh, listen, we, listen, we're pilgrims passing through, aren't we? The, the, the Christian, we're strangers in a weary land. This is not our home, and uh, we have a hope uh, of eternal life with the Lord. Well, let's read about it in 1 Corinthians 15. Stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, you know, is the chapter of death. Um, I, I would encourage you, if, if you have not had uh, read the Bible today, at some point, get alone and just get in your recliner and read 1 Corinthians 15. And he says, in death, there's life. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is the chapter of love. 1 Corinthians 14 is the chapter of gifts. 1 Corinthians 15 is the chapter of death. But he says there's life after death death. Read with me, starting at verse 12, or follow along, 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there's no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. It's empty. It's, it's wasted. Your faith is, is in vain. It's, it's empty. Yea, we also found false witnesses of God, because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, you're yet in your sins. It gets worse. Then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, they're perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Let me give you the Bill Snow translation. If this is it, if this is all we got, that's miserable. But there's more. And Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, and I know you're standing, I won't preach while you're standing, God's put eternity in the hearts of men. There's something within every one of us that longs for more. Verse 20, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, but so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Pray with me. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that we could reap your wonderful word. 
passages of scripture like this we could just read it over and over again it's higher it's bigger it's deeper than we are give us wisdom to preach it help us to understand it and lord i really pray help us to live it help us just to believe to trust lord there's coming a day where lord thank you for it that we will see you meet you face to face lord for some whether it's in death or whether it's in a rapture even so lord jesus Come quickly, I pray. Thank you for the morning. Now give us ears to hear what your Holy Spirit wants us to hear and understand. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Again, I would tell you, <clears throat> um, if you're looking for a good chapter, take it easy, reading translation, uh, get comfortable, uh, get your coffee, get your sweet tea, get your coat, and uh, read uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and just enjoy it, and just enjoy what the Lord has to say. Now, let me give you a few thoughts um, about heaven and and eternity uh, before I get into the, and I hope you have an outline, it's in the bulletin on the back tables. Um, Heaven's our goal. That's our goal. that's, that's That's the plan, that's the hope of every one of us. Matter of fact, I would, I would tell you this. How could I say it? Jesus doesn't, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus does not want anyone, and he proved that on the cross, to go to hell. He wants people to go to heaven. That's why he went to the cross. He paid the price for your sins and my sins to be forgiven and washed away, and you cleansed and have a right relationship with him. So I I, I start the message by saying, isn't our goal and isn't our hope to go to heaven and to be in the presence of the Lord? That's it. Paul said it like this. Paul said in in Philippians, I press towards the the mark for the prize of the high calling, the upward call of, of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pressing on to get to heaven. And if that's the goal in heaven, to be in his presence, Isn't that, in a sense, the goal right now also? To be in his presence? Isn't it a wonderful thing when you come into a worship service like this and you sense the Holy Spirit of God? Isn't isn't that the the goal? I mean, and sometimes he's always here. He's always, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw him into me. And listen, he inhabits the praise of his people. He's, he, two or three are gathered in his name, he promised to be in the midst. But there are times when we, when we worship him and lift him up that we sense him, we feel the pressure of the Holy Spirit in, in this place or wherever, wherever we're at. It's a wonderful thing, it's a beautiful thing to feel his presence. And that's the goal even on a Sunday morning. And that's what I pray for. I pray when I come into this church. Most, most, sometimes I walk outside if it's a beautiful day. I walk around the, in the park a lot and pray. But sometimes I'll come in here and I'll say, Lord, don't let there be any other place like this place, near this place. Let this be the place. Let your Holy Spirit just rule and reign. And I just want to say, that's our heart. That's our goal. To feel the presence of the Lord. And, and I would say this to you. Why would you want to be out there somewhere if God was in here? If the Holy Spirit's in here, that's where we want to be. If we want to spend eternity with him in in his presence, why don't we want to spend now with him in his presence? That's the goal. That's that's the hope. I remember uh, Reverend Roman Miller. He was, um, I forget if he was a Quaker or a Mennonite, but he was a drunk. And he was in jail, and, uh, and he, he read a Gideon Bible, and he got saved. And uh, transformed his life, got out, and, and uh, grew spiritually, and uh, became a preacher, became a preacher. He became a teacher at Wesley College, where I attended, and he eventually became the president. Of, of the college. Uh, it's an amazing story. But he came into the preacher's class one, one, one morning. He was teaching us young preachers. And he said, men, I've been with Jesus this morning. <laughs> I'll never forget. I said, Whew. He 
It's been with Jesus. Isn't that a wonderful thing to say? I've been with Jesus this morning. So I, I just started, I, I, way too much time, I'm sure, right there. But that's our hope. That's our goal. Listen, when you have your devotions, when you spend time with the Lord, when you're, when you're, when you're praying, when you're praising, when you're reading the Bible, that's our hope, to come into his presence. I would say this also before I get to the points of the message that more is said in the Bible about the horrors of hell than the splendors of heaven. It describes, it describes hell pretty much in depth. And in heaven, I, I'm going to preach to you and I'm going to leave you, your head's going to be scratching, you're going to be scratching your head, you're going to be going, I don't know, pastor, as I, as I share with you in a few minutes what I know about heaven. And, and you'll see, he, you'll go, pastor doesn't know a lot about heaven, does he? Well, there are some things we can know, and we will certainly, certainly look at. Matter of fact, I'm going to preach in a few weeks a message I like to preach every few years. Um, it's called Hell's Hall of Fame. Hell's Hall of Fame. And what I will do that, that morning, I will, I will journey through hell. We'll take a trip. I'll be the tour guide. And we will journey together through hell. And we'll talk to people that are in hell. And we'll ask them, why are you here in hell? And then they tell us this, this message I preached. When I was younger, I'd go to camp meetings and, and revivals. And I, I'd, I'd preach that. And, and a lot of that message. And so it'll, it'll, be, a, it'll be a few weeks uh, from now. So, uh, but I want to preach a message about, about how, how many have heard that message before? Just a, a handful have heard, have heard that, that message before. Okay. All right. Um, 1 Corinthians thirteen twelve says that we see through a glass darkly. Okay. When I talk about heaven, think this through with me. This may be a two-parter. I, I don't know. Okay. There's a Christian. Let me say it like this. There's a whole lot of living left. There's a whole lot of living left. Many of us have, have loved ones on the other side now in, in heaven. Just think, what, what do I think will take place next? I pray the, the rapture. I pray the rapture, okay? Then we're in heaven. Saints are in, Christians are heaven. The dead in Christ rise first. Why? They're going to get a new glorified body. Or they'll get a resurrected body. They're already there. They come back with him in the clouds and they will get a resurrected body. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And then, okay, we'll, get, we'll be changed. This is 1 Corinthians 15. Our bodies will be changed. This mortal will put on immortality. This flesh will put on a spiritual. This human will put on a heavenly, okay? Like that, we'll be changed. We'll get a resurrected body or perhaps a glorified body. We'll be in heaven for seven years while tribulation is taking place on earth. There'll be the seals that are broken, the seven, seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, seven vile or bold judgments. We will be in heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. And then at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So we'll be in heaven at, at, at marriage, the, the judgment seat of Christ. There's five uh, sets of crowns, rewards. There's a pastors receive a, a, that have been faithful, receive one. There's, there's a soul winning uh, a crown. And there's, there's the, 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 the crown of uh, those has the gift of evangelism, it wins souls, there's crowns, but there's five crowns and we'll lay them at his feet in act of worship to him at the judgment seat of Christ. And then we'll have a marriage supper. So we're in heaven seven years. Now after seven years, what happens? We come back in Revelation 19. Matter of fact, that's called the revelation, his return uh, after seven years to the earth. And that's what I preached at, at, at Armageddon set up. Okay, and, and, and it's the battle of 19 about the battle of Armageddon. And then the thousand year reign starts. And Revelation 20 says we shall rule and reign with Christ. And that's it. You can, you, you can read it. And so, so we'll be back here and, and again for a thousand year reign of Christ. And then after that, matter of fact, Satan and false prophet, false prophet, I should say, are thrown into the pit. And then Satan's released after a thousand. I don't know why he's released, but he's east after a thousand years. Then he goes to the north, south, east, and west, and he finds anybody that will rebel. And there's one final, you can read it. 
and final battle called Gog and Magog. And then it says, there's a new heaven, a new earth. You say, Pastor, why did you say all that? Because there's a whole lot of living left for Christians. That's why. It's not, it's not just getting your harp and you've got to do this. No, 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 no. There's a whole lot of living left for those of us who love the Lord. Okay. So, God's got a lot of things planned. Matter of fact, on the screen, Revelation chapter 20. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. What's the first resurrection? The, 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 the rapture. And the dead in Christ are resurrected, and then we are caught up together. That's the first resurrection. What's it say about it? On such the second death hath no power. Praise the Lord. Why? Because you've been in heaven. You've been in heaven the whole time. What's the second death? The second death is the lake of fire. And everybody whose name's not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. You better make sure your name is written in God's Lamb book of life. They shall be priests of God and of Christ shall reign. There's a thousand year reign of Christ. Okay. There's a whole lot of living left for those of us who love the Lord and are serving him. Okay. Another truth or two. As I preach this and teach this, it's much better than what I teach and preach. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the screen, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Look at, here's what, here's what we quote in verse 9 all the time. I quote, it's written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for those that love him. How wonderful is that? But then verse 10 says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. He says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for those that love him. It's far better than we can think or imagine. But then he says, but God's revealed them unto us by his spirit. But we can understand some things about heaven and some things that he has for those that love him. And then I would say to you, number four, and I'll give you point number one. Eternity's too long to be wrong. Eternity's too long. Listen, you think, well, I got a lot of, a lot of years here. I buried some people yesterday at some funerals. I hope you get 80, 90 years. I hope you get 100. But compared to eternity, that is a speck in time, that is just, a, a, just a, a little speck compared to how long eternity is. Eternity's too long to be wrong. Don't get it wrong. Okay. In your notes, if you have it, number one, the question is, what will we see in heaven? Mm. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, colorful sights. Now, um, I'm 64, I'll uh, be 65 in April, 13th if you want to write that down, um, <laughs> kidding. I lived a lot of places growing up. My mom wrote them down for me, matter of fact, all the places we lived and how I lived 17 different places in 14 years. I guess we made our home in, in Anniston, uh, Alexandria now, but I guess we made our home in Alabama. We stayed for 40 years. Um, California, Virginia, Philippine Islands, at Clark Air Force Base, uh, New Jersey, uh, settled down as a 14-year-old in, in Georgia. And uh, we, we, we did a lot of traveling. Listen, uh, we've seen a lot of things. We've been to Arlington Cemetery at the Changing of the Guards. That was wonderful. We've been to Grand Canyon, Yellowstone Park. Uh, uh, Meyer and I stood where Martin Luther King gave his speech. I, I have, have a dream in Washington, D.C., We've been to Israel, Africa, Alaska, Canada, London. I saw Buckingham Palace there, and, and we've seen glaciers, east coast, west coast. Meyer was able to, she was privileged to sing on the Sea of Galilee as uh, we were in the, the boat there. And she sang at the garden tomb also when we were receiving communion, and she was able to sing. I, I simply say that we've seen some beautiful sights. Beautiful sights. Now, I've never been to Hawaii. How many of you have been to Hawaii? 
Okay. Wow. Wow. How about you? Okay. There's, I, I, I've thought I've never seen Niagara Falls. How many of you seen Niagara Falls? Oh, I, we've lived a sheltered life. Okay. I've never seen the Florida Keys. Been to Florida Keys. How many have been down there to Florida Keys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've never been to a, a Super Bowl or a World Series. And I'd like to. Hmm? If you if you have any friends, get any tickets. You let me know. But I have seen the birth of my two girls, saw their first steps. I've seen a little girl come out of a walker and exceed all expectations and still exceeding expectations, running. I'm, she's jogging with her grandpa. There's two miracles right there. <laughs> I've seen another one on the other side of the family, little Hojo, how, born two pounds, Two, ounce, two pounds, two ounces or something like that. Just a little, little bitty thing. Miracle. She's got a heart for Jesus. She just sings, worships, worships the Lord. I'd say we've seen some wonderful, beautiful, precious, special things. We've seen it. You want to you get a picture, a glimpse of heaven? Read Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, the beauty, the beauty of it. And we've seen some beautiful things here, but nothing compares to how beautiful it is there. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Listen, he has been preparing a place for you. Heaven, beautiful colors. We'll see angels. We'll have a heavenly home. It talks about streets of gold. I guess you take that literal, gates of pearl, walls of jasper, a sea of glass. Most of all, we will see a beautiful Savior, the one who died for us, the Lamb of God. You'll see him on his throne. What will we see in heaven? Unimaginable, beautiful sights in Jesus, our Savior. What will we hear in heaven? <clears throat> what will we hear? Number two. First of all, you won't need hearing aids. And I say praise the Lord. You'll have perfect health, perfect hearing. Years ago, I went to the doctor. I said, doctor, I said, I think my wife is losing her hearing. He said, well, here's what you need to do. Just, just get up behind her and talk to her and see if she hears you. I said, okay. And he said, if she doesn't, just get a little closer until she does hear you. I said, okay. So the, I got about 10 feet behind Myra. And I said, uh, she's in the kitchen. And I said, hey, babe, what's, what's for supper? She didn't say anything. She didn't hear me. So I got five, a little closer. I got about five feet from her. I said, hey, babe, what's for supper? She didn't hear me. She didn't say anything. So I got right behind her. I said, hey, babe, what's for supper? She turned, she said, for the third time, I said spaghetti. <laughs> oh, I think it was my hearing that was so bad. Uh, yes, okay, okay. How many of you have some sort of hearing problem? Not in heaven, not in heaven. Arthritis, not in heaven. Mm. There won't be cancer in heaven. There won't be dementia in heaven, no Alzheimer's in heaven. Perfect bodies, no walkers, no wheelchairs, no, nothing broken, not, not in heaven. Let me tell you what you won't hear in heaven. You won't hear honking of horns or road rage. Hmm? That's good. You won't hear people yelling in anger. You won't hear profanity in heaven. You won't hear bad words. No, no, not in heaven. There won't be insults in heaven. There won't be gossip or slander, no criticism, no cry of pain, no agony, no sorrow. No, no, not in heaven. No ambulance sirens, no police sirens. Meyer and I were pulled over the other day. True story, state trooper. We had been last, last Monday, we, we went walking with the family over the park and, and uh, 
we got in the car and it was dark and I came to the Alexander Fire Department, you know, where it says that you can go anywhere in the world from right there. So we love that. And there was a car across the street from me at that insurance place parked and the lights were, he was already at the four-way stop and he beat me to the four-way stop. And so I was, I, I, I was there and I pulled up and he beat me to the four-way stop. So he needed to go, but he didn't go. And Myers, my witness, he didn't go. I, so I said, okay, I put my blinker on and I turned right, right there. And like you go to uh, Cody and Mary Beth's house there and uh, the Kirklands. And, uh, and then I, I took a left right there and, and they got behind me. I didn't know a state trooper. <laughs> or I wouldn't have done that, what I did. But, but uh, he got behind me. And then I'm going down that, this, it's a narrow road and the bridges are really narrow on that little, little bypass type road before you get to 431 there where Downey Drugs is. And, and so uh, I looked in the river and the, and the lights were going there and I said, my goodness, he, just a plea. he's got me, he got me. So I pull over and roll down the window. We got the insurance card ready. We get the, uh, the ID ready, the uh, driver's license. I said, was I speeding officer? He said, no, you uh, swerving, you, you, you swerved. I said, well, the, the bridges are narrow there. And I, I sort of had to, to move over a little bit. And um, he, he said, then he said, he said, well, you, you moved over three times. And his, I said, uh, I said uh, he said, uh, have you been drinking? <laughs> he did, yes. He, he said, have you been drinking? And then Miss Snow has to pull the preacher card. She, and, 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 you know, she's, well, he better not. He's a preacher. <laughs> but it worked. It got us out of a ticket. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. yeah, I thought, my goodness, she pulled the preacher card on him. And it, yeah, and it got us out. I said, oh, my goodness. He went back there a few minutes, and he came back and gave us a warning. Okay. All right. Okay. Heaven. Heaven. I don't know why that story is. Uh, no sirens in heaven. That's what it was. Okay, here. Listen. <laughs> Here's what you'll hear. Listen, on the screen, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, and then Job. Here's what you, you'll, you'll hear angels. You'll hear angels talking. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, the tongues of angels, and have not charity, I'm become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Job 38, 7 says, when the morning stars sang together, most believe that there's angels and all the sons of God shouted for joy. I've never heard an angel, but I tell you what, in heaven, we'll see him and we'll hear him. We'll hear praise to the Lamb of God. We'll hear the song of the redeemed. We'll hear the testimonies of the saved. We'll hear stories of the saints. Can you imagine the music? You think this is good, and it is good. Praise team, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, amen, amen. Listen to me. They're not just good, they love the Lord. And they love each other. Now we give them each $1,000 every Sunday. No. Yeah, Alex is going, I hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> no, we, we don't. No, they just do it for their love of the Lord. Yeah, that, Cody's going. They just love the Lord, and they're just using it. We're blessed. They're talented people. They love the Lord. I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm grateful. But listen, in heaven, it's going to be a sweet, sweet sound, sweet music in heaven. And some of you that can't sing, Maybe in heaven you will be able, you, you can, huh? Maybe. I, no promises. I say, I sing good, but I sound bad. <laughs> yeah. I tell people, I, I've, I've shared this before, so if you've heard it, you take a break. I, I said, you know, I wasn't raised in church, and I wasn't raised in the singing family. Matter of fact, when we met, we were Christians Christmas and Easter, and we sat in the back and just listened to everything now. now but... Um, so, but we didn't have a lot of singers in my family, but I, I say the closest I came, I did have an uncle. He was in Sing Sing. Yeah. He was always, beh- and he was behind a few bars, always looking for the right key. That joke's about 40 years old, but it's still pretty good, isn't it? All right. Some of you that can't sing, maybe, maybe you can in heaven. Some of you that won't sing, that don't sing, you probably will in heaven. You probably won't be able to help yourself to praise him. 
Heaven's music would be beautiful, bright, holy, harmonious. We've got some old songs. Remember the, remember the song, Mansions Will Glisten on Hills of Glory? Happy reunion on streets of gold. Angel choirs singing glad praises forever. And it says, but Jesus will outshine them all. Charles Wesley wrote hundreds of hymns. One of them said, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing praises to our king. He said, I wish, you know what that says? I wish I had a thousand tongues to praise him. Not just one. Some of you don't use one tongue to praise him. What Charles Wesley said, I wish I had a thousand tongues to sing praises to our king. Fanny Crosby wrote over 8,000 hymns. She wrote, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the lamb, redeemed through his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. Rich Mullins, he died as a 41 year old. He wrote, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power and love. Our God is an awesome God. These guys sang in a quartet. Well, many of you, most of you weren't, weren't here years ago. Brother Gerald Tykersley was the song leader when I got here as a 23-year-old kid. He led singing in this church for a total of about 40 years, I believe. He knew music. He loved the Lord and he loved people. He was plagued in his later years with arthritis. His hands started to turn a little bit and his body started to bend over, but it didn't stop him. <laughs> it didn't stop him. He'd play the piano still and make it sing. He's in heaven today to his sons. Maybe when you see him, he'll be straight. He will be tall. Y'all can sing together once again. You can sing that song. There's a family Bible on the table. Pages are worn and hard to read, but that family Bible on the table will always be my key to memories. Okay. What will we hear? It'll be beautiful. The air would be pure, sounds would be crystal clear, colors bright and brilliant. Maybe a gentle breeze, I don't know. Maybe a river flowing. Most of all, you're going to hear Jesus. And when he speaks, his, his voice would be the sound like a trumpet. Everybody will hear his voice, and maybe every time we hear his voice, we'll, we'll fall on our knees and we'll realize how unworthy we are and how grateful we are, and we'll just adore and worship him. I know one day... One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, and I pray on that day you hear him speak and say, well done, good and faithful servant. It says in Matthew, you've been, it says, you've been, ruler over, you've been faithful over a few things, I'll make you rule over many. I always see that and say, Lord, I don't have to rule anything. No, no. But he'll say, enter now into the joy of the Lord. What we'll see in heaven be beautiful. What we'll hear in heaven unimaginable. Number three, this is what many of you want to know. What will we eat in heaven? <laughs> Some of you are very concerned about this. I'm hoping there's a Chick-fil-A <laughs> in heaven. Now, don't, don't you? I get my points. I gather my points. I do a free meal. Okay. We'll start at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's a feast in itself, and it's a celebration. Now, let me clarify a few things. And we probably eat too much. You know it? Amen? We're a praying church, but I'm not sure we're a fasting church. That may go to me. I, I enjoy eating. You say, Pastor, you don't look like you. It's because I run 10 miles every morning. No. <laughs> Enjoy eating. We probably eat too much. John Wesley said, never get up from the table satisfied. Always leave room for a little bit more. There's been a lot of times I've got up from the table and I said, sorry, John, I blew it. <laughs> yeah. I have thought about after I ate so much changing denominations. I've eaten so much I've got up before. I said, I, I feel like a full gospel preacher. <laughs> yeah, join that denomination. But... We eat, we eat way too much. You know, I've said what a belt is on a preacher before. A belt on a preacher's a leather fence around a chicken graveyard. We just, we just love it. Okay. 
Jesus said in the upper room on the screen, Matthew chapter 26, verse 27 through 29, he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Hmm. He said, is that, is that wine we're going to have in heaven? Don't worry, you're not going to get intoxicated. Don't worry uh, about that. I don't understand all of that, but that's, I, I think when I read that, I think, okay, there's going to be in heaven, but it won't be, it won't be bad. There'll be manna, maybe. Bible says it's food of angels, sweet, light, and tasty. Revelation 22, verse 2 says there's 12 different kinds of fruit from the tree of life. I've searched the scripture for sweet tea. Can't find it. But I'm still hoping. Steak, chicken. Don't see it. I do see fish out of Ezekiel 47, verse 9. Pure water from the river of life. Juice from the vine. Fruit from the, the vine. It'll be just right for us. I know that. He's got wonderful things in store for us. The fourth question out of five, what will we know in heaven? Will we gain it all at one time and know everything? Or will we have all eternity to learn and to grow? Okay. You'll know Jesus, okay? You'll, you'll immediately know Jesus. And you'll know your loved ones. If they're in heaven, in 1 Corinthians 13 talks about you will be known even as you're known. Will I know Meyer? Yes, I know that, and I'll know she was my wife, it, it, but there's no marriage in heaven. It's better than, than marriage is what he's, the Bible teaches, okay? It's a greater love. It's a, sweet, it's a sweeter love. On the screen, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love, unto all the riches of the full assurance of the understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom, all the things to know of knowledge, they're hid in God. He knows them. Isaiah talked about who can, who can teach the Lord? Who's the smartest person in the world? There's nothing compared to the Lord. What can, you, what, what can you and I teach the Lord? There's nothing you and I can teach the Lord. But we can learn. Will we learn it automatically when we get there? Or will we ask him, I, I, t t show me about what really actually happened at creation. Show me, tell me about mankind before the flood and, and how they lived. Talk to me about the flood itself. Tell me about Israel's history or Jesus' birth, Jesus' life from, from, from 12 to age 30. Or tell me about Jesus' miracles or talk to me about his death, his burial, his resurrection. We will learn about these things. Listen, oh, that the stars and gravity and space and DNA and soul and spirit and time. We can't fathom all these things now, but we can start to know them now. But one day we'll know. No, oh, what's the brother's name? The brother David, um, Jeremiah. David Jeremiah, he said in one of his sermons, he said, in eternity, he believes in the final outcome, in the final outcome in heaven. He says, I, this, I don't want to put words in his mouth because I don't like when people put words in my mouth that I didn't. People say, Bill, you said, I'm going, I don't think I ever said that. So I, I don't want to, he's, but I believe he said, we, we may be able to fly if, if we'd like to, from planet to planet and from place to to place, we'll know, we will know. Will we get it all at once or have eternity? I don't know, but you can talk to Moses, meet Joshua, meet Gideon, meet David, meet Paul, meet the apostles, meet the prophets, meet those that are martyred, most of all, see Jesus. Here, we know in part, we know in part, there, we'll know, okay. What we see in heaven, beautiful sights. Here in heaven, crystal clear. Eat in heaven, know in heaven, Number five, and I close, who will be in heaven? Let me tell you who won't be in heaven. Those sinners, lost, good old boys, religious people who judge and condemn, hypocrites, people who try to earn their salvation, 
false religions of the world who will be in heaven on the screen john chapter 3 verse 3 jesus answered and said unto them, verily verily truly truly is the double truth emphasis i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god who's going to be in heaven those that are born again preacher you say that no that's what jesus said i want to ask you this is your name written in the Lamb's book of life when you gave your heart and life to jesus christ he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life. I would want to know, and there'll be a day when the books are open. Hell will be filled with religious people. Jesus wants a relationship with you on the screen, and I close, Revelation. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. That's the second death. Next screen. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or makes a lie, but they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I don't know. I do not know if my name is in the book of life. I do not know if I'm right with God. You can be. And we want to help you to be right with God. Would you stand with me, Meyer, to go to the keyboard for us? Would you stand? Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You stand. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. We're going to have a moment or two of prayer. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. I give you an invitation. You say, Pastor, I want to be right with God. I want to make sure my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I want to know that I know that I'm saved and right with God. But, Pastor, I'm here this morning. And I'm not right with God, but I want to be. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Why are you play? The invitation's given. Pastor, I would like to pray. I'd like to take a step forward. I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm asking you to make sure you give your heart and life to Christ. If you're here this morning, you don't know, and you want to know, the altar's open. An invitation is given to know Christ as your Savior. Would there be one? So, Pastor, I'd like to pray. I'd like to pray. I want you to go to heaven. Jesus wants you to go to heaven. If you're not sure, you can be. Is there any would say with an uplifted hand, Pastor? When you close in prayer, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Amen. 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 Let me pray for us, okay? Would you be seated? Would you be seated so I can, it gives me a little more freedom to pray. Father, we're grateful for the morning to be in your house. We're grateful for your blessings. We don't take it for granted. You're a wonderful Savior. And I'm just believing you, Lord, that I've preached about heaven, that there are people here. They're ready. Lord, I thank you for life. I thank you for your blessings here. Give us a good long life. Help us to make a difference in people's lives. But Lord Jesus, when you split those eastern skies or when we fold our hands in death and close our eyes, I pray, Lord, we hear that well done. Have your will in our lives. Jesus, if there's one here that doesn't know you and the free pardon of sin and you as Savior and Lord, I pray right now they would, they would ask you to forgive them of their sins, wash their sins away. They're sorry for their sins. They repent. They take responsibility for them, Lord. And we ask you with your precious blood that you shed on Calvary's cross to wash our sins away. Remove them from our life. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. And Jesus, I invite you. We invite you to come into our heart. We open up our heart and life and we say, yes, Jesus. Come in. I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. And I will love you and I will live for you all the days of my life. And I thank you that heaven's my home. Lord, write my name in your book of life, I pray. 
thank you for saving me. Thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. Thank you for the morning service. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good, good. All right. Barry and them are on vacation for a few days. And uh, they're, they were supposed to go to Asheville uh, up there, but that didn't happen up in Asheville where it's so flooded. So you pray for Barry and Terry. They'll be back, though, uh, by, by the weekend. They sure will. Okay, is there any announcements that would need to be made before we're dismissed? Sign up for the yard sale. Sign up for, a, have a table there. That's out, information's out there. And Wednesday is first Wednesday. We'll have worship service in here, and I'll be preaching Wednesday night, okay? Good. Good. And I don't want to speak out of turn, but yeah. um, Cody and Mary Beth Grammer yeah. have one child today. Tomorrow morning, they'll have three. Y'all be in prayer for them and that family. That's wonderful. Good. That's, that's wonderful. Amen and amen. Good. All right. Let's stand together. Listen, we love you. Have a great afternoon. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you for being here.